Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan. Here to go into and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. First, I want to praise God for all that he has done for me. He has blessed me beyond me. At this stage of my life, I truly can look back and see his hand upon my life. And no doubt we are in agreement that we have all been blessed. Blessed with family, friends, food, shelter, shelters, clothes, salvation, health, strength, a portion of intelligence, and so on and on, including material, spiritual, tangible, and intangible blessings. Do you agree? Not to boast, I have three children. And my youngest, Joseph. And I have two grandchildren. I have lived long enough to see my children grow into adulthood. And I'm looking forward to Joseph completing his undergraduate studies and moving to the next level of his life. So we do have much to be thankful for. But I must tell you that I struggle with allowing the pressures and stresses of this world to occupy too much of my life. The pressures of life, the job, and circumstances have a way of putting you to the test. But I must continually be reminded that whatever I'm going through, it is only a test. And without the test, there is no testimony. There is no growth. We just looked to the recent events in Hershey, Pennsylvania, in Florida, and even here on campus. And it is apparent to me that there are things that are bigger than I, in which I have no control. But God does. Case in point. I have a job that I enjoy, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. A recent uh, event, we are working on a new degree program. And uh, this program has been approved, and uh, we've been asked to implement the program. However, it seems like each time we, we, we seem to go forward, there's always something okay, to get in our way. To not to prevent it from happening. And so we just keep getting bogged down and get, keep getting bogged down. I also have students that, uh, that come to me and they ask for letters of recommendation for vet school or to the next level, to, to or go to the next level. And these applications should be submitted uh, in a timely manner. But the students wait until the last minute to come and ask for your letter of recommendation, which sends a signal if they wait until the minute uh, for you to submit to, to give your input, what did that say? Their desire to the next level. So we have to really, we have to really be concerned about that. And then I have clients that need immediate attention while at the same time you're trying to meet deadlines. So it's easy to become burdened and overwhelmed. I have that feeling of becoming burdened and overwhelmed. No doubt many of you can relate to that, right? Well, I did when I was a student. But I remember one of the most cherished moments that I have as a student here at FAMU is when we used to have what we call the Dean of Students. And uh, we were sitting on the steps of the uh, dormitory. And we were, we were 
frustrated over the amount of work that uh, it seemed like we had to do. And we were there commiserating about uh, how insurmountable that work was. And the dean came up and, you know, just asked and engaged us in conversation and asked us what was what was going on. And he listened to me. And, uh, and that the, the mere act of listen, listening to us just gave us encouragement. I always took that with me. He took the time to show that he cared and he was concerned enough about it and it made a difference. And it's that kind of attitude and encouragement that I have tried to impart to my students to show genuine care and concern. I believe still makes a difference. But even more, I know that we have God's promise that we are to cast all our burdens upon the Lord because He cares for us. I want to encourage you to do that. Do not give up. Don't act contrary. Hang on to I can do all things through Christ that strengthens. Let me back up for a minute and tell you a little about myself. I am the son of a farmer. I graduated from FAMU a lot of years ago. <laughs> won't say how long. And then I went to Tuskegee and I graduated from Tuskegee uh, School of Veterinary Medicine. I went to Tulane and received uh, a master's in public health. And then I served 21 years as a military veterinarian and I retired at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Six years ago, I accepted a position here at FAMU because basically, I felt that this would be a good way to end my career. Hopefully having a positive impact and influence on just the way that I was benefited when I was a student. My bottom line is this. If I can do it, so can you. And I believe that. If I can do it, so can you. I preach, I want you to see yourself, okay? And not where I am, but Father. It is all of our desires, okay? That you have a positive attitude and know, okay, that you can do it. But you must be serious. You must be serious. These are some of the tools that I feel that can help. Be courageous. Be consistent. Be competent. And be careful. God tells us to be courageous. Be strong and partner with him. You do your part and leave the rest to him. His promise is, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. This had to be my consistent reminder for most of last year. I had taught for five years, and sometime during the year last year, I was told that I was not qualified to teach because I did not have a terminal degree. So I was taken out of the classroom. At the same time, I had to supply, I had to apply for tenure. You know what tenure is? If you don't, if you're not tenured, then they give you a terminal contract and you must look for employment someplace someplace else. Um, even though I was allowed to teach for five years. But I had to hold on to it. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And God was faithful. He allowed me to make him go to talk to God. Hang on to that. Just fuck and do your best all of the time. Day by day, stay the course. Be competent. Study, 
Learn the skills. Learn the tasks that will set you apart. Be the best that you can be. Be confident. If you have done all you can, let it show in your positive attitude and your positive outlook. Let it show in how you think and how you act as your back. Be careful. God said be careful to obey his laws. We have his promise that he will fight our battles if we obey him. I have two points that, uh, that I want to leave with you, which uh, has meaning to me. The first one is by Langston Hughes, uh, called Mother to Son. Check this out when my son was he approved of it. Okay. Anybody heard of Mother to Son? Uh, Langston Hughes, Mother to Son? Mm -hmm. Just listen. It's, 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 it's just real mindful of my mother talking to me. And it goes, well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor there. But all the time I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find it kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for eyes are still going, honey. Eyes are still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. The other one is by Edgar Getz. And it reads, courage must come from the soul within. The man must furnish the will to win. So figure it out for yourself, my lady. You were born with all that the great have had. With your equipment, they all begin. Get hold of yourself and say, I can. My prayers for you is that God will continue to bless you in all of your endeavors. And if you need to, uh, need to check with me at Page, please. Feel free to do so.